religion with people. Um, well, yeah, I mean, like, I have, I, if, if Amy Coney Barrett gets on the, onto the court and, like, the rights of uh, LGBTQ people are being threatened, hell yeah, I'm going to advocate for the courts to be packed because I don't want to get arrested for, for being who I am in public. Um, I don't want to be able to get beaten to death and have my uh, assaulter, uh, my murderer, get off scot-free, uh, which, by the way, they can currently do in many places across the United States anyway, despite the LGBTQ protections that we have. Um, trans panic laws are still very much in vogue in many parts of the U.S. Um, holy, Taylor, Taylor Swift, are you fucking kidding me? You, you do realize that, like, just like 10 years ago, people were getting lynched for being gay. Like, literally, literally, uh, trans people, trans women in particular, are some are the targets of some of the most uh, vicious, uh, like, assaults. Um, like, it, it's pretty shocking. Uh, there are people, if you pass them on the street and, if, and they see that you're trans, who will uh, beat you up and assault you, maybe even killing you, just for being trans. Um, if you go on a date with someone and you don't reveal to them that you're trans and they find out and they get angry, uh, there are some states where they can literally kill you and then argue in court that they were panicked because of the revelation and get off scot-free. That is a valid defense that people can employ in the courtroom. Um, so, like, don't don't tell me that, like, oh, yeah, like, that gay people aren't going aren't going to get beat up for being gay yeah no come on dude come on like literally like 10 years ago people were getting lynched for being gay like come on Yeah, I mean, like, just take a look at stuff like this. You can find you can find countless stories along these lines. Okay, um, let me throw it up. You can find countless stories um, of you of U.S. men uh, being charged with murdering LGBTQ people. Um, you can find this all over the place. Yeah, this was last year, but whatever. It it happens all the time. It's not like it's not like queer people, by the way, make up a huge uh, a huge like set of uh, the population. Like, yeah, there are there are tens of millions of us, but in a country of three hundred million, um, you know, we're we're still very much a minority. So, like, a you know, it it's you see more stories about non-gay people getting murdered, but. People get murdered for being gay and targeted for being gay for, like, assaults all the time. Wait, why? Let's see. Oh, there was a shooting just today. Uh, send it to me over on uh, Twitter. Uh, my Twitter is the same as my, um, as my, uh, Twitch handle. Why did the media sweep that story under the rug? I, no one swept it under the rug. They're, it's, it's in the BBC. Uh, but also, uh, like there, I mean, Matt Matthew Shepard is one of like the really famous ones in 1998. You can look that up. It's a very high profile lynching of a gay man. Um, well, to be fair, I'm going on a date with a woman, and she tells me later that, well. Taylor Swift, the she wouldn't be telling you that she's a man. She'd be telling you that she's a trans woman, which is different. Um, oh, oh, oh! What do, what do you expect to happen? What are you saying that the only thing uh, that you would beat them to death? Are you saying that you would physically assault a woman uh, for being trans because you had the audacity to be attracted to her and you went on a date with her? 
Like, holy shit. Yeah, look, I Lady Lady Rain, I, I I have enjoyed talking with Taylor Swift. Um but like just just so you know, Taylor Swift, I'm a trans woman. Are you saying that you would beat me if you found if you happened to be attracted to me and we were hanging out together in public and uh you found out that I was trans? Are you saying you would beat me? Uh I, after all, what did I expect to happen hanging out with you as a trans woman? Like, holy fuck, dude. Oh yeah, here is the, um, here's the story, uh, that is being talked about in chat. Uh, indie trans woman, uh, Sarah Blackwood murdered walking home from work. Um, this happened just yesterday. Uh, transgender woman Sarah Blackwood was shot and killed while walking home from her shift at the Indianapolis Long John Silvers Sunday evening. Um, let's see. A family, a friend of the family corrected us about her last name and offered this about Sarah. Last night, Sarah Blackwood was walking home when she was shot and killed. The homicide detectives have not told Avery much about what happened exactly, so they don't know for sure. What we do know is that Sarah was shot and alive at the scene. However, she died during an emergency surgery at the hospital. This is the extent of Avery's knowledge on what happened. Um, yeah. So, yeah. And, and also, by the way, when trans people get murdered, often it is reported as the death of a man. Um, just, just another little dig at, uh, how uh, how trans people get treated in the United States. Um, <clears throat> sorry for the loss of uh, Sarah Blackwood's family and friends and uh, loved ones. Um, obviously, that's very sad. But uh, what I'm trying to get at here, uh, Taylor Swift, is that this is a uh, this is a bigger problem than like. Oh, a nice, a nice lady who just has you know, her own personal religion is, you know, why would you, why would you discriminate against her religion? Well, she's discriminating against other people who have other fundamental beliefs, uh, in order to, uh, prop up her own, uh, religious beliefs, um, and foist them on other people. So, like understand that like her nomination to the supreme court and putting the rights of other people in jeopardy um is actually a big deal for the queer people out there like we we live with the results of this every single day unlike a lot of cis people um so it's it's actually really important to a lot of uh queer folk out there <sighs> oh, but I mean, like, yeah, a lot of people don't agree with it and think it's a mental illness. So are you saying it's okay to beat for, for other people to beat mentally ill people? And like, that's me just buying into what you're throwing out there. Like, trans people aren't mentally ill. There is somewhat of, uh, like a correlation between, uh, some degree of mental illness and being trans. Uh, however, that's not, like, scientifically linked. It just tends to be, I think, that a lot of trans people experience a lot of, um, you know, abuse over the course of our lives. And uh, abuse tends to breed uh, certain uh, mental complications. Yeah, look at your comment above. I am looking at your comment above. The comment that you said was, if you were on a date with a trans woman and they revealed to you that they were trans... Uh, you know, you, uh, you would be freaked out. What do you expect to happen is what you asked. Like, you're not advocating for violence against anyone, but you also under- you- you're also implying that you would understand why someone would beat up a trans woman. Uh, despite being attracted to them and despite liking them well enough to go through an entire date with them. So, like, understand that your views are kind of sus. I'm not reading it wrong. That's what you implied. 
Um, yes, boss. Uh, gender dysphoria. That is that is a thing that happens. Um, however, not all, all not all trans people experience gender dysphoria. And I, I do have to say that uh, trans people uh, experiencing gender dysphoria are not experiencing, like, that. that's not something that is, that, that, that's something that can actually be treated in trans people by allowing them to transition and supporting them um, in their endeavors. So, like, it's, it's not that big of a deal for anyone except for trans people themselves. <laughs> uh... Oh yeah, here's here's another story. Um, I I am I'm, I am going to cut off after this one just because it makes me really sad to read these stories about murdered trans women. Um, but man arrested for strangling trans woman to death with her own hair. Um, the man is claiming he panicked when he found out the victim was transgender. Um, this is from uh, late last year. Um, Yep. Uh, oh, uh, he was 25, uh, murdered a 17-year-old. Uh, let's see. Secured a search warrant, found messages between the two on Snapchat on the day of her death. Uh, David and Nikki went to a residence in the county, and at the time, Nikki confirmed to him that she was uh, assigned male at birth. David gave a statement saying that made him really, really uncomfortable and disturbed him. And he asked Nikki to get out of his van, and she walked away. Uh, we suspect that there was an, so, probably some interaction where, and by his own admission, that he determined that somehow uh, found out during conversation that she was transgender, and he started. He stated that he that was offensive to his culture, and he asked her to get out of the van. Um, now the the murderer or suspected murderer claims he didn't see her again after she left his van. Um, and however, she was found, let's see, yeah, found a, uh, a human skull in the woods, um, and that, uh, they met on the day of her murder and that she'd been strangled to death with one of her own hair extensions, which seems like a crime of passion. So... You know, obviously this person de deserves a fair trial, but uh, it's pretty damning, uh, damning circumstantial evidence here. Um, but yeah, this is something that happens quite a bit, actually. So when when you when you make statements like, "What do you expect to happen?" Um, the answer shouldn't be. Uh, beat like physical violence or murder okay <sighs> let's see oh uh cool troy you have uh the, you have your one official warning um if you continue to be transphobic in the chat you will be banned um Let's see. It's a sad situation, I'm just explaining. Well, yeah, trans people know why people react the way they do, but, you know, for a lot of younger trans people who don't have a ton of experience, uh, they don't know how people are going to react. So, like, for example, a 17-year-old meeting an older uh, individual um, revealing that she's trans, uh, she might not necessarily know how dangerous that actually can be. So, like, yeah, like, we, we get it. We, you're, you're explaining it to people who live the reality of it all the time, but you're also kind of justifying why it happens. And, and like, please, please don't. Just, I, I, hope, I hope that you're learning something from this conversation. Like, it, it's a really unhealthy attitude to have towards trans folk, okay? Um... 
Okay. Bye, Cool Troy. I wish you lived up to your name, but it's fine. Um, let's see. The suicide rate doesn't change. Actually, uh, boss, uh, for, for trans people who receive, uh, like, transitional care and have the support of their families, the uh, suicide rate actually down, like, dips by a good, I think it was, like, over a hundred times over. It, like, it, it absolutely phenomenally huge dip. Um, let's see, trans suicide rate, uh, falls, let's see, let's see here, yeah. Accepting adults reduce suicide attempts among LGBTQ youth. Um, let's see. Here, I'll put it. I'll put it on screen so we can all look at that together. Okay. Uh, LGBTQ youth who reported having at least one accepting adult were forty percent less likely to report a suicide attempt in the past year. Um, Let's see, nearly 80% of youth who completed the Trevor Project's national survey on LGBTQ youth mental health reported disclosing their sexual orientation to at least one adult. Among those who disclosed to at least one, 79% had at least one adult who was accepting of them. Um, over one quarter of LGBTQ youth who did not have at least one accepting adult in their life reported attempting suicide in the past year. Um, to 17% of those who had at least one one uh, accepting adult. So uh, yeah, you actually if if you are that accepting adult, if a if a young person comes to you and tells you that they're queer, um, yeah, it actually great it like you can re you can reduce the uh, likelihood that they're going to try and kill themselves by at least uh, almost 10%. Okay, um, so that's that's something you can do. Um, that isn't, however, the uh, set of statistics that I was looking for, so I'm going to keep uh, looking for them real quick. It's hard to find stats that you need on the fly if you don't have them collected into some kind of research document. Um... The yeah, the rate is incredibly high. Um Oh, well, you know, Taylor Swift, maybe you know what? I I would like to uh educate you on this topic. So, you know what? I think uh, since you are coming from a place of not having much information, um, what do you want to know about trans people? And like, I'm giving you carte blanche to ask me anything, um, because while you you and I don't necessarily see eye to eye, I think that underneath uh, your your lack of knowledge on this, uh, you general you genuinely do want to understand. Um, so ask away. Uh, and, uh, I will do my best to answer you, okay? We can- we can talk about trans people, it's okay. <sighs> See... Isn't exactly what I was looking for. This is also not what I was looking for. What the fuck? Why? No, they're not here, uh, Archangel the Cub. At least I haven't seen them.
Oh, maybe this was it. Uh, like, what makes someone feel the like they need to be a different gender? So basically, to to kind of give this give give you this, um, there are there are basically a couple different kinds of trans people. One type does not experience uh, gender dysphoria; they just want to be a different gender. Um, and the other type experience experiences what's called gender dysphoria, and that's something that I have experience with. And essentially what ends up happening is that um, as, you, as you grow older and you go through puberty, you start feeling intensely uncomfortable with your body. And you might not even understand why. For example, it took me many years of like trying to figure this out before I realized why um, I was just constantly miserable and uh, constantly... Um, unhappy whenever I was aware of myself. Um, so like, for example, I would lose myself in doing my work or doing my, uh, you know, working on my thesis for college or uh, playing video games for like 12 hours straight. You know, things that would take my mind away from having to uh, manage the, uh, you know, moment to moment experience of existing within my own body, you know. It's not super healthy, but that's how I managed my feelings. Uh, for a lot of other people, it can, a lot of other trans people, it can be uh, reading, it can be, um, and it can be less healthy things like um, you know drinking or uh, drugs, um, or or cutting or you know stuff like that. Uh, so it is a deep seated um, feeling that you are not right in your in in your skin. Um, and it's this feeling that uh, pushes a lot of trans people to uh, physically transition, you know, so it's not something that you can tamp down and just refuse to deal with. Um, it, it's, it's very overpowering, and uh, for a lot of trans people, if they do try and, like, you know, reject those feelings, uh, A, they keep coming back again and again over time, and B, uh, it... it for a lot of them, it makes them so miserable that uh, they end up committing suicide, you know? So, like, it's it's this very powerful drive that exists within you. I, I kind of liken it to, um, you know, wanting to rip your skin off all the time. Like, just this, this buzzing anxiety that exists within you. Um... And the other thing is that, as people in chat have noted, uh, there is a difference between biological sex, which is, um, you know, your your hormones, your, your you know, or not your hormones, your your chromosomes, your uh, genit genitalia, stuff like that, and your gender. Uh, so there are there are two different uh, aspects here, um, and so on the one hand you have. Um, you have sex, which is a lot of the, the biological characteristics that people are, are born with. Um, and those actually have way more variants than a lot of us uh, exper like uh, know. Um, especially if your your knowledge of biology starts and ends with like middle school and like dissecting like a, a cow fetus or something. Um, so there's a lot of variance within biological sex and um, but for a lot of us, we're just taught, yeah, there are men and there are women, and that's it. Um, and so for a lot of people, too, on top of that, they build their identities on um, being a man or being a woman. And so the idea that a man can become a woman becomes offensive to a lot of men. And the idea that a woman can become a man becomes offensive to a lot of women. Um, so it's it's a very complicated topic. Um, let's see. Yeah, uh, Jamaican me crazy. Are you talking with someone in chat? Or are you talking to me? Um, you want to tear your skin off? So it's like being an accountant. Ha ha! But <laughs> no, 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 noob tubinator. It's it's more like being a lawyer. Okay. Um. 
so there there you have the biological sex you have the gender identity um and the thing to uh note about gender identity is that um is that you have uh a wide amount of variance within gender as well like for example despite the fact that in america most of us are taught in school that you have men and women you have boys and girls uh there are other um there are other uh, societies around the world who have had three official genders, four genders. Uh, some have gone up to like 17 different genders. So like, and, and historically. Um, so like, there's a lot of variance within gender as well. So you have biological sex and then gender identity. And so what makes a trans woman a trans woman, for example, is that their biological sex at birth has been determined by a doctor. They, they have been assigned male. Like, that's what's written on their birth certificate. Um, however, their gender identity does not align with their biological sex, and so they need to take steps. And, and, and that usually, for a lot of trans people, becomes a source of anxiety, a.k.a. the gender dysphoria. So they then take steps to... Uh, rectify that uh, dissonance between the two. Um, and uh, yeah, that's basically that's that's basically in a very simplified nutshell um, the the trans experience. I, I I don't know if that did did that make sense, Taylor Swift. Um, and I oh, and to answer the second part of your question. For some trans people, it, it depends if they feel it since birth. For me, I didn't necessarily have the vocabulary to articulate, yeah, I'm trans, because like I didn't learn what a trans person was until I was in my early 20s. Um, and so like when I was growing up, I just knew that I wasn't like other kids. Uh, I, I knew I wasn't like other boys. I was doing things that like I knew weren't male things to do um but like i i didn't know how to, how to articulate how that made me different um until i started um learning about like what trans people were that you could just be a trans person and be a normal person <laughs> um and so like that uh that that's kind of uh, at least for me how it worked um like i remember uh for example, like crying when I started going through puberty. Um, yeah, it's it it is a very difficult situation to be in. I and I want to make it clear for like a lot of trans people, we don't want to be trans because we recognize inherently um, that being trans in our society is really fucking hard. Um, it's really rough. Like there are days right now where I like sit and I I just like my mind wanders and I wonder what my life would have been like, how much farther I would have progressed in my career, um, all, all kinds of things if I wasn't trans and having to devote so much of my time and energy uh, managing this, this process. So uh, for a lot of trans people, what ends up happening is that we repress it um, over and over and over again until uh, we can't repress it anymore. And at that point, um, there, there's kind of like a realization. Either you you go through this process that's going to make your life exponentially harder, or you uh, you kill yourself. Like for a lot of a lot of trans people, like that's that's why the the suicide rate is so high. Um, and I can't really blame trans people for recognizing that it's really fucking hard to live as a trans person. Um. So yeah, it, it's a tough situation to be in just by itself, but then you add in all of the other like surrounding factors, like the fact that there's a ton of people who, and as you can see, like you've been in this chat for a while, like there are people who will come in here and just like repeatedly insult me for no reason other than the fact that they found out I'm trans. Um, and they'll do that to other people too. There are, there are people out there who will murder people for being trans. Um, there are all, all kinds of things. Like, I, I have to think about, like, my safety when I go out. Every time I go out. Um, it, it's rough. It's difficult. 
Um, and, and true, Archangel Dacab, that that is true. There is a difference between being comfortable in your gender identity and, like, you know, uh, a, a cis man who feels comfortable wearing makeup or doing drag. There's a big difference between them and a trans person. So drag, for example, oftentimes a cis man, a cisgender man will... Um, put on women's clothing and makeup and, you know, look very fabulous and put on a show. But the idea behind that is that uh, they are putting on a performance. It is a, it is a show rather than that being who they are all the time. Like when RuPaul goes home at, in the evenings, uh, he identifies as a man and like he takes off the dresses and the costumes and the wigs. He takes that off and he wears a suit. Or, you know, whatever. Where's pants? Um, like, that, there, so there's the difference between, like, drag and, like, trans people. Uh, and it's something that a lot of people who, again, don't have a lot of knowledge about this will tend to conflate together. The more than two genders thing, I really don't understand. So you're a woman, but you don't identify as one. Well, no, I identify as a trans woman. But there are other people who identify as other genders. So, like, for example, uh, one of the big ones, I think, in India? Chat? I'm, I'm sure someone in chat knows better than I do. Hello, Kaludar. Um, in India, for example, there is uh, a common third gender called a Hirja? Hiraj? Um, so, like, there, there are official other genders where, like, the gender roles are very different. Um, but, uh, and, and we'll get to your, your comment, boss, about uh, hormone blockers, because I think it's actually less, um, it's less complicated than uh, a lot of people tend to think it is. Um, but, uh, yeah, so, like, and then there are, uh, in the Philippines, there's a common third gender, and maybe that's where I'm thinking of the Hirja. Um, but, um, you yeah, know, I'm going to look it up so I can actually try and pronounce it right. Hijra. Yeah. Um, yeah, so there, there is a uh, officially recognized, by the way, uh, third gender in uh, India called the Hijra. Um, and uh, they roughly, they're, they're, some, they're, they're viewed as kind of a cross... Uh, I mean, it's it's more complicated than this, but um, like a lot of people in the West might might uh, consider them like eunuchs or intersex. Um, but basically, they're a third gender. They occupy a different gender role than men or women in uh, Indian society, and um, they have a long history going back thousands of years in India. So, like, the idea of there being only two genders is something that is historically not like accurate to the human race on a global scale um over time <sighs> um but yeah i identify as a woman but i also recognize that i am not a cis woman i am a trans woman so a cisgender woman is somebody who is who's assigned birth who, who's assigned uh like sex at birth matches their gender identity. The same way uh, cisgender men, uh, their assigned sex at birth matches their gender identity. Um, mine didn't, and that's what makes me a trans woman. Um, am I legally a woman? Uh, yeah. I mean, it depends on, it depends in what situation, I guess, but like my driver's license says I'm a woman, so like, yes. Um, right. If you are, if you are a trans woman, I can never be a cisgender woman. Uh, I, I, I can never be a cisgender woman. Um, but like, it's the same way that like, if you're a white woman, you can't be a black woman. They're both women. They're just different types of women. So same thing with transgender women and cisgender women, two different types of women that are still both women. Um, let's see. 
Yeah, also, also uh, done randomly brings up a good point. Uh, in Native American society, there's also the uh, the the two spirit. Um, the Ojibwe have uh, basically a, a combination of the genders um, in a what is typically considered kind of a um, like spiritual role within tribes. Um, let's see. Oh yeah, and also like there there's non-binary, so somebody who doesn't ascribe to any of the genders. Um like they or or ascribe their gender identity to something that is, you know, uh other than ma ma male or female or men or women, I guess. Um so th there's a lot there's a lot of complexity here. Um and essentially like there can be as many genders as we want because gender is a social construct. Um, yes, exactly, Taylor Swift. If you are trans, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're gay. Um, there, there are straight trans women. I, I happen to know some. Um, there are also gay trans women, uh, trans lesbians who are only interested in women. Um, and then there are a lot of bi or pansexual trans people. So, like, sexual orientation is different than uh, gender identity. Indeed, Riot Girl Callie, all of reality ex exists on a spectrum. Unless you go into a black hole, and then there's only spaghetti. <sighs> yeah, um... And, like, by the way, when it comes to biological sex, what I said before, there is a wide spectrum of biological, uh, of the way, like, biological sex manifests in people. For example, some people are born with XX chromosomes, which uh, typically would mean that they would develop into a, uh, a woman, a cis woman. However, because of some hormone quirk or some, uh, some other aspect of their development, they wind up going through instead a male puberty and for all intents and purposes have the genitals of, um, you know, uh, male genitals have, um, and, and like have, uh, look male, uh, but they're, they're actually intersex and the same goes the other way too. And also there, there are people who get caught in between. So like there, there's a wide variety when it comes to the like genetics and biological side of all of this. And, uh, as well as to the, um, the, uh, social constructed side of this, the, the gender side. <sighs> am I streaming tomorrow? Yes, I am, boss. So, for example, there's men who become women, um, but are still attracted to women. Correct. Um, I happen to know a large number of those types of trans people, too. Yeah, they're... They're, they are uh, affectionately called transbians. Yes, also true, Archangel the Cop. There are many combinations of chromosomes besides XX and XY. That is also very true. Yeah, uh, done randomly. I think uh, like there are some native tribes in Mongolia that have up to 17 different genders. Uh, let me let me pull that up. Yeah, here we go. I remember pulling this up back in the day. Um just as a, as a little visual aid. Um, oh, nice, boss. Congratulations on your sister being a socialist. Okay, and I'm going to put this up. Yeah, con congratulations on having a base sister. Uh, okay, here's a map of gender diverse cultures from 2015. So this is probably a little bit outdated in terms of uh, how many there are. Um, but basically, we can click on these, and it will tell you, uh, look, the uh, Chuck, 
the Chukchi, the uh, neighboring indigenous peoples, including the Koryak and the uh, Hamshadal, uh, are a nomadic shamanic people with who embrace a third gender. Generally, shamans are biologically male with some ad adoption of female roles and appearance who married men but also were not subject to the social limitations placed on women. Third gender Chukchi are... Uh, could accompany men on the hunt as well as take care of the family. Um, let's take a look here. Um, I cannot show that on stream. Um, yeah, there's the Kathoe, uh, the third gender in Thailand. Um, yeah, after after that little uh, whoopsie, I'm gonna I'm gonna. <laughs> Uh, look out! Uh, look out! Look out over here before I uh, throw things on screen. Yeah. So, or for example, you have in Albania. Over in Europe, the first documented in, 18, in the 1800s, but traced back to the 1400s, northern Albania's Bernesha. Um, they're uh, biological women who take a vow of chastity and wear male clothing in order to be viewed as men in the highly patriarchal, patriarchal society. The tradition also exists to a smaller extent in Kosovo, Serbia, and Montenegro. The tradition is dying out. Some are uh, there are believed to be fewer than 50 sworn virgins left in the Balkans. Um, also, Italy, you have the Femine Femineo. I, I don't know how to pronounce uh, Italian. Uh, biological men, uh, males who dress as women and assume female gender roles in uh, Neapolitan society. Their station in society is or was up through the 19th century, privileged, and the rituals, including marriage to another, was based on Greek mythology related to Hermaphrodita, Hermaphroditus and Perisas, Perisias? I, man, I cannot pronounce things to save my life. Um, who was transformed into a woman for seven years. Um, yeah, like, also remember that in the grand tradition of uh, Western culture that uh, conservatives like to talk about so much, um, some of the some of the biggest uh, and and held up as like the the best sculptures of all time are are of trans women like women pe people with the body of women the bodies of women have dicks they got they got little girl dicks down there um it's pretty great um <laughs> let's see. Dang, Ashley, that sounds really rare. That makes you very special and unique. Um, let's see. Yeah, uh, and Riot Girl Callie brings up a good point. Um, I I typically don't correct this right away, Riot Girl Callie, because like, I, it, it's a lot to take in at one time. But basically, that the the semantics of saying that like a trans person becomes another gender uh is not technically correct like for example i was always a trans woman but like you know lacked the vocabulary or agency to pursue that identity you know um so that is that yeah all, all kinds this this is a great tool i'm I'll, I'll put this i'll put this over in the uh the description whenever i cut out this segment okay uh you have the travesty in some cultures of South America, a travesti is a um, a person who is born male, has a feminine gender identity, and is primarily sexually attracted to non-feminine men. Travesti's feminine identity includes feminine dress, language, and social and sexual roles. However, in contrast to transsexual women, they often don't see themselves as women, and many describe themselves as gay or homosexual. Travesties can modify their bodies with hormones or silicone, but rarely seek genital surgery. Um, so, yeah. Many travesties survive through prostitution in recent years. Violence against travesties skyrocketed, especially in Brazil. Um, you have the uh, Kari, Kariwarmi in Inca, the, uh, among the Inca in Peru. 
Uh, pre in pre-colonial Andean culture, the Incas worshipped the Chuki Chinche, a dual-gendered god. Third-gendered ritual attendants or shamans performed sacred rituals to honor this god. The Kwariwarmi shamans wore androgynous clothing as a visible sign of a third space that negotiated between the masculine and the feminine, uh, the present and the past, the living and the dead. Their shamanic presence invoked the andro androgynous creative force often represented in Andean mythology, according, according to scholar Michael J. Horswell. They were deemed sodomites by the conquering Spaniards, because of course they were. Um, well, yeah, I mean, like, Taylor Swift, that's, that's, that's part of the goal of, like, the modern trans movement, is we, we just, we just, we just want to be left alone for the most part. We just want to live our lives, uh, without being afraid that a man that we go on a date with is gonna murder us, or, like, somebody at a gas station at night is gonna, like, look at us funny and, like, pull out a gun and uh, shoot us dead, you know, stuff like that. Um, we, we just want to be able to live our lives and like marry someone that we love and like be like everybody else, you know? Um, so to go, to go to, um, your point, uh, boss, uh, a little while ago, you talked about, um, Hormones, hormone blockers, puberty blockers. Um, oh, excuse me. Uh, just to talk a little bit about that. So the typical process for puberty block blockers is that a kid who's like nine or ten uh, will say to their parents, "Hey, I feel kind of like uh, I'm not a boy." Um. Well. Uh, I mean Taylor Swift. I I think I think we can get there. I I am an optimist. Okay. If I wasn't an optimist, I would say whatever. We should just blow each other off the face of the planet because everything's hopeless anyway. Um, but I want to believe in a future where I can find love and I'm not under threat of getting beaten to death by strangers. Okay. Uh, forgive me if I want to live in that fantasy. You know. Uh. <laughs> uh. But um. Uh, yeah, so a, a nine-year-old or ten-year-old uh, com comes to their mom or dad and is like, "Hey, mom or dad, I I feel I feel like like I I'm a boy, but like I feel like I should be a girl." And uh, mom or dad goes like, "Oh, okay. Well, we'll we we love you either way, uh, kiddo." And uh, then they uh, you know the kid is like, "Okay, we'll we'll go to therapy." You know, the, or the, the parents tell the kid that, okay, we'll take you to therapy. We'll see, we'll see how this shakes out, okay? Uh, so they go to therapy, they find a therapist, and over like the next year or so, maybe two years, um, the kid goes to see the therapist to talk about gender feelings. And uh, eventually the therapist goes, either this kid, this isn't gender dysphoria, you know, this kid isn't trans, like they're experiencing something else, um, or the therapist goes, yep, this kid is definitely trans. And uh, so from there, the uh, the family with the kid, who is now, you know, uh, around 12 or 13 years old, uh, goes over to the doctor and the doctor's like, oh, OK, here's the, uh, you know, here's the uh, your, your therapist's note. Uh, I see that they say that you're trans. Are you, are you sure that you want this? Here are all the effects. Um, and the, the kid and their parents, like, read through everything, you know, think it over, and they go, okay, well, well, we'll, we'll start with the puberty blockers, because basically what puberty blockers do, and have been used for in other cases for cisgender children, is that they just delay puberty. So, uh, a kid who's, like, 12 years old is not getting a hormone replacement therapy to, like, help them grow boobs or anything. So basically what happens is the um, the kid then starts these hormone blockers and it just delays puberty. It doesn't prevent, it, it doesn't like completely stop puberty from happening. It just delays puberty for a year or two. Um, and during that year or two, you know, you continue going to the therapist to like, you know, make sure that like the kid is still feeling the same way because at that point, if they're feel, if they've been spending six plus years thinking that they're trans 
chances are pretty good that they're fucking trans. Um, and then around when they're, you know, maybe late 15 years old, uh, 16 years old, maybe even 17 years old, uh, they go to the doctor and they're like, yep, I'm, I'm sure I want to start hormone replacement therapy. And then they go through a normal, uh, normal ass, normal, uh, puberty, just like every other kid their age. Um, and when they hit 18, that's basically when they can, if they want to get any surgeries that they might want. Um, so like the, the hormone blockers don't do any harm because also if they change their mind at, you know, 15 or 16 or whatever, they're like, actually, I think I'm, I think I'm a cisgender boy. I think I was just really confused. Um, at that point, they can just go off of the puberty blockers and then they experience their normal ass, normal cisgender puberty instead. Either way, the benefit is that they only go through one puberty because if they go through two puberties, um, it's really hard to undo puberty and like get your desired results. Um, like if basically if you ask any trans person, they will tell you, um, <laughs> Is that normal ass normal normal ass normal? Keck. <laughs> Hello, youth 1993. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, basically they, uh, they, they have no ill effects. They just go through the one puberty. If you ask any trans person, they're going to tell you, yeah, gee whiz, I wish I could have only gone through one because goddamn is going through a second puberty in your 20s not fun. Not a good time. <laughs> That was fun to read anyway, you. I appreciate it. Um, but yeah, does that uh, does that help under you all understand that that topic? Like it's not it's not super complicated. It actually like greatly reduces the uh, suicidality of young people uh, to not be forced to go through a puberty that they didn't want. Um, so that's why a lot of doctors prescribe puberty blockers, by the way, because it's actually like doctors don't care about the politics of something. They care about treating their patients and the best way to treat trans kids or kids who think that they're trans is to give them puberty blockers. That keeps them the, the safest. Youth, I can't, I can't help you with your, your following or not following uh, shenanigans. I, I'm sorry. I hope you have followed though. Um, likewise, if anyone out there watching is, uh, having a good time listening to the stream or watching the stream, uh, please consider, uh, hitting that, hitting that little follow button. We're trying to build a community here and trying to be cool and rad and, uh, radical leftists, you know, we're, we're, we're the radical left Antifa that you've been war, that you've been warned about. We want to give you free health care. That's right. We want to we want to make sure your grandma can go to the doctor and not be tens of thousands of dollars in debt. That, that's right. We want to make sure homeless people have houses. We're the radical left Antifa. <laughs> we want to make sure that you don't die of starvation in America, the wealthiest country on earth. We're the radical left. <laughs> we think trans people are valid and you should treat everyone with respect. We're the radical left Antifa. <laughs> We're coming for you to make sure that you are loved and appreciated the way you deserve and you're getting the mental health care that you need. We're the radical left Antifa. 